Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about planting avocados. And here in my lap, I have what's called the Pinkerton avocado. If you want to zoom in and take a look at this image over here, and it reads on the label that it's a tasty edible fruit, ideal for fresh eating, heavy producer, ripens October to January. Um, on the back side, let's see if it says anything about pollination. And this one doesn't, but I do have some other labels I wanna share with you that do. Other quick facts I wanna tell you about the Pinkerton avocado, which I grabbed from californiaavocados.com, is that the Pinkerton avocado has a very small seed, the Pinkerton avocado can tolerate shade better than most other varieties of avocado. So the flavor is supposed to be as good a quality avocado as the Haas avocado and also has fruit that are about twice the size of the Haas avocado and it bears a lot more vigorously than most other varieties of avocado. So there's just so many pluses when it comes to the Pinkerton avocado. Um, great taste, excellent peeling, small seed, large fruit, um, so I mean, those are just some of the characteristics. When it comes to labels, when it comes to picking out your avocado, there's two different types. One's called the type A and the other a type B. The Pinkerton is a type A avocado. The Haas avocado is a type A avocado. But behind me over here is the Fuerte avocado tree. And this is a type B avocado. If you've got room in your property for two avocados, then consider planting a type A and a type B but it's not necessary to have two avocados in order for your avocados to bear fruit. Despite the fact that some of these labels over here, which I've grabbed from other avocados that I planted here in my garden and other gardens um, around the community, but take a look at this over here. Fuerte avocado, and it reads right here on the top of the label, this fruit needs a pollinator. And again, we just said, and this is a fact, avocados do not need another avocado for pollination. This one over here, this fruit needs a pollinator. So see back, I'll show you what it says here on the back. It says, use one of the varieties listed below for pollination. The bacon, forete, gym, nabal, winsen, and the zutano. So those are all, if this here is the Haas, which is a type A, then all of these are type B avocados. And that's the reason those names were listed. Over here, this label says, self, Fertile, reed avocado. Here's another label, says self-pollinating. This plant will fruit without another variety and the label on this one says Haas avocado. So there's conflicting information among the growers, but if you do have room for two avocados, what having both a type A and a type B avocado will do for your avocado trees is it will result in larger fruit and it will result in higher and heavier yields. And that's what most of the research supports. And that's the reason behind introducing another avocado. It'll increase your yields on average somewhere between 5% to as much as 20%, um, depending on the year and, and, and other um, factors and variables. So um, consider planting again, a type A and a type B avocado. One other thing I wanna share with you is this tree, um, which I just picked up from the nursery, you can see is coated in this white paint. And I called the grower, which is over here. You can see right down at the bottom, it says grown by Laverne Nursery. And so I called the grower and I said, what is this stuff on here? And they said, it's simply white paint. They took some paint and they painted on there. I'm like, why would you do that? And they said, to prevent sunburn and sun stress to the tree. Um, we're gonna be talking about a couple other products which are organic based and have other benefits to your plants um, when applied to them. Um, so we'll be doing that shortly, but before we do, take a look at the other, other trees behind me. I've got here the Fuerte Avocado, and this one was installed just like this Pinkerton about a year, year and a half ago. So this is less than 18 months, and you can see that it's about seven and a half to eight feet tall. Um, and then over here is my Haas Avocado, and you can see that the central leader is about nine to 10 feet tall. And this one also is about 18 months. When I installed it, it was probably closer to four feet tall when it was in the ground. Um, and what I'm going to do now, and I usually do a whole video on pruning, but I'm running out of time. I just wanna share with you that if your goal is to keep your plant more compact, there's two different things you can do. 
One being you can bend, you can bend the branch out of the way and try to shape the plant to go in another direction. But my goal today is to remove the central leader, like so. And what I'm doing, if you're coming a little closer, I know some of you guys like to see this. What I'm doing is I want these branches to be my leading branches. And this is gonna create the canopy and it's gonna help me keep the plant a little bit more compact. But I'm basically going about a quarter inch above the next highest branch and I'm pruning it at an angle. And what I'll do next is I will coat it with the Ivory Organic product and then spray the entire upper part of the tree as um, this branch offered some sun shade to the upper part of the tree and with the Ivory Organic spray, I'll be able to cool off the upper canopy as it continues um, producing more branches and more leaves to cool off the lower branches and trunk. What I've also done by removing the central leader is I've now encouraged more growth along the side of the tree. All of these other branches will continue to grow um, out and will become a lot more thicker and more vigorous as a result of removing the central leader as I'm now encouraging these lower branches and giving them a chance to gain the resources and the nutrients from the ground. Up. Let's get back into planting. Follow me. So we've just prepared the hole right over here. We went no deeper than the size of the container. If we take out this shovel, you can see that if we put the container in here, it's gonna rest beautifully in there. The goal when we're done is to make sure that the um, plant is no deeper than the level of the ground. We don't want it to go not a half an inch and not an inch deeper than the level that it's at in the container. In regards to the level that it's at in the container, I just pull this back, but if you take a look over here, when I got this avocado, I was looking for the seed. And what I did was I pulled back on the soil and I found the seed right down here. This grower put a little bit too much soil over the seed. It should have been at this level. They buried it at least a half an inch, if not an inch too deep in the pot, which I'm gonna cor correct when I install it in the ground. If you go up a little further, you can see that the graph line is right there. There's a V that is right in the um, in the rootstock, and then this is the scion wood, the desired flavor of the avocado that was grafted on top of the rootstock. What we're going to do next is improve the soil condition. Um, we've just excavated all of this dirt, and then we're going to now add some compost. You can add either your own compost from your garden, just make sure that it has sufficiently broken down before bringing it in. If you put in green clippings and, and um, material that hasn't quite composted all the way down, you risk the fact that those um, materials will rob the nitrogen out of the soil and also possibly contribute towards rot. Avocados are especially sensitive um, to too much moisture and you want, are going to want to make sure that if you're going to add compost that you make sure that it's um, sufficiently again broken down. What I have over here is a product made by Kellogg's and it's their label called Grow Molts. There's another product called Amend. Let's see what it's made out of. We can turn the ingredients over here real quick and take a look. That The ingredients are recycled forest products, arbor, um, fine compost, dairy uh, manure, which is probably um, cow manure, composted poultry manure, chickens, dehydrated poultry manure, um, hydrolyzed feather meal. So we're talking about chicken waste, cow waste, feather waste, recycled forest um, products as well. So pine needles and whatever else it's, um, it's made its way in, into here. And we're just going to take some of the, this product and we're just gonna put that in the hole like so. And it's recommended that you add about 50% compost to your 50% native soil. So we're just going to mix that into the native soil like so. Now that I've got all this extra soil, I'm going to take about half of it back out. And that'll be part of my backfill over here. Take a look at this. One of these guys just came out, a little earthworm. What we're gonna do next is we're going to now enrich the soil. In addition to the compost, we're gonna add a product like this. This product is also made by Kellogg's, and it's not necessary, I know Espoma makes products. 
Dr. Earth makes products. There's a whole line of organic products. And again, they're derived from, let's see the ingredients over here, bone meal, poultry manure, feather meal, kelp meal, and alfalfa meal. So again, a lot more organic products going back into the soil. With so what this is gonna do is it's gonna feed the earthworms, it's gonna feed the beneficial bacteria, it's gonna feed the nematodes, it's gonna feed the, um, the beneficial fungi in the soil. We're just gonna add a little bit. I would say, without even looking at the directions, about a quarter cup or less. We're just getting the tree started. What this is gonna do is get a lot more life underneath the trees, help with the aeration underneath the plant. And now we're just going to mix that up a little bit more. And we're done. So now we've prepared the hole. We've enriched it with compost. We've enriched it with an organic fertilizer. And now it's time to plant the tree. When, when removing the plant from the pot, it's advised to press a little bit on the container to loosen it from the sides. And then I like to angle it down like so. And tap on the bottom and here it comes. Take a look at those roots. So you can see the roots, actually they're there. They're just not as wide as the ones on the side. But it's advisable to kind of wake up those lower roots and make sure that they're not root bound, which means that they're all coiled and could potentially strangle the tree in the future as those roots grow. You wanna make sure that they're all growing down and out from the tree. So just by doing what we did, we're gonna help wake up the plant. I'm gonna put it in the hole. And you can see, if I get my stake over here, I kind of use this as a level. We're gonna need to bring the plant up a little bit more. We can see that we're gonna have to bring the plant up about another inch. I'm hoping you can capture that on the camera. Here, I'll spin it a little bit more so you can see it. So we're gonna wanna get this seed, the avocado seed, up a little higher. Another point I quickly wanna make about the avocado seed is the avocado seed is a cross between the male and the female parts that then went to make the child, which is the seed. So the genetics of the seed is, is maybe related to the parent tree. So if you got a Haas avocado and you wanna plant those seeds and hopefully enjoy Haas avocados in your garden, you've, you don't have a Haas avocado. It may be related to the Haas avocado, but it could also, might as well be you know, a larger avocado, it could be a smaller avocado, it could bear um, less frequently, it might be fruitless. Um, you're basically getting just like the children of parents, they're related, but sometimes they're different. Actually, all children are different um, when it comes to people. So um, just like the Haas avocados, the genetics are always different than what the actual Haas avocado could be. I don't want to say that it's going to be better or worse, but the Haas avocado is a one in a million. It's the world's favorite avocado. So if you want to make sure you got a Haas avocado and you're planting Haas avocado seed, you need to graft it with the Haas avocado um, variety, just as we did with here with the Pinkerton. They took the Pinkerton um, cutting and grafted it onto the rootstock of this particular seed, whatever that seed variety may be. So, so, if, so if your goal is to have a Haas avocado, be sure to either grow your Haas avocado by air layer, and I'll show you um, in the link down below how you can air layer your avocado trees, um, as I did with a citrus tree earlier this year, or you can um, graft it, as was done in this situation with the Pinkerton avocado. We're now gonna backfill, actually before we backfill it, like I said, we're about an inch too low on the ground. So we're gonna pull this tree back up, add a little more soil. And now you can see we're right where we wanna be. And now we're just gonna backfill the rest of this around. I'm going to take my organic fertilizer as well and add a little bit more to this mix of native soil with the amended compost that was added. We're just gonna mix that all around plant like so. I'm also going to create a berm to basically help retain the water around the tree. And you can see that I'm pressing down not too hard and not too soft. I'm pressing to basically remove any air pockets that may be around the avocado tree. And Here's our berm, 
and we'll put our sprinkler back in place and I'm just going to top dress it one more time with a little bit more organic fertilizer and we can just mix that in like so. One other thing before we um, go any forward, if you come a little closer, you can see all these green bands are on the, on the tree. These green bands need to be removed. If you wait another couple of months, these bands will actually strangle the avocado tree from growing. It'll trap the um, water and the minerals and the nutrients from flowing up and down the tree. What we're gonna do is remove the bands and restake the tree um, using our own stake. So here we go. So we're now gonna remove the ties and the next, and the next one. And we can just pull that out like so. You can see that without the steak, this tree is pretty wimpy. Be sure to subscribe and I'm gonna remind you guys at the end I will do some follow-up videos so you can see how fast these trees grow. The Pinkerton avocado is one of the most vigorous of the um, avocado trees um, when it comes to growth. And And you can see the importance of staking your trees to make sure that they remain upright while their supporting structure gets stronger, the underlying wood to help support this tree on its own. And here we go. That'll support it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna wrap my twine around just the stake and not the tree trunk, and then I'm gonna tie a really tight knot to hold my supporting ties at this level. What I'm also gonna do, I noticed when I um, picked up this avocado tree from the nursery, there was this pruned end over here. When I like pruning my branches, I like to make sure that I'm about a quarter inch away from the next node, which is where the leaf connects to the um, stem. And even though this is a flower bud, um, ultimately this is where it's gonna continue to branch and grow out of. We're not expecting any fruits in this first year, but we may allow it to fruit some next year. The goal for this year is growth. We want this plant to grow as much as possible. The next step here is we gotta water the plant. And I've got here some sprinklers, which I can turn on, hopefully I got the right zone. So our next step is to water the plant. I got soaked also while I was preparing the sprinklers, as you can see. But I would typically run this particular sprinkler, which is watering other trees throughout the garden as well. And I'd run it on average for about 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes. I want to make sure that the entire um, circle around the plant, this entire berm is full of water. To expedite this, I'm going to use my hose here to show you. But the goal is we want to soak this entire area. So you can see now this entire area is filling up with water. I'm just gonna come back in with my hand, just make sure that the soil's filled in, all of those air pockets that may exist around this planting. And you can see that the level of the seed is still way up here. So half of it is sticking above the ground, half of it with the roots are below the ground. And by planting it at the right level, aside from root rot, which we all know about, if you actually bring the, if you plant your plant too deep, you also risk um, another phenomenon called stem rot. And that's where the stem begins to rot because it's too low on the ground. The roots are meant to be in the ground, the stems are meant to be above the ground. So make sure you get that right. The last step here, let's turn off the water now. So the last step is to protect your plant from sunburn and insects and rodents. We've had an issue in this garden with um, whether it was a mole or a vole that actually girdled and actually chew 
all the way around the tree. Um, this product here, if you want to come in a little closer, reads, Ivory Organic, a three-in-one plant guard, protection against damaging, sunburn, and insects and rodents for uses on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And it's now registered material for use in organic agriculture as well. If you take a look over here, it says, um, let me wipe that off here. It says, um, protects newly installed plants and trees as we did today, but also sh shields pruned and damaged surfaces as well. When you go to prune your plants, or if there's any tears in the bark, you can coat it with this product, which has, in addition to the protective paint layer, it also has seven natural oils, which include castor oil, and cinnamon oil, and clove oil, and cedarwood oil, and garlic oil, and peppermint oil, and rosemary oil, all natural oils that all offer plants defense. All of that is infused into this product and um, offers a time release um, breakdown. And you can see that some of this paint that they put on the, pro on, on the tree has since fallen off. I noticed while I was um, planting the plant that there was also some paint materials within the soil. And keep in mind that paint is designed to last for decades and beyond. It's meant to last forever. Um, we know that when we're applying it to the skin of the plant, the tree is naturally going to grow and expand and all of that exterior stuff is going to fall off. Um, hence the reason and the importance for doing things organically. What we're going to do here is we're just going to open the product like so. And I already mixed this before the video. We can see this is color white. It's also available in green and brown. And now we're just going to coat the surfaces with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard. You can go all the way down. Like so. What you can also do, if you don't want to mix this product, which comes as a paint powder and an oil vial, you can also get it ready to go. This here is also Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard spray on trunk, branches, and leaves. The sun is not here yet, but when it does, it'll be protected. And we can just shake it and spray it, like so. And I'll have you zoom in in a second. I don't want you to get any of this mist on yourself, but you'll see that it's now got a nice organic layer of organic sunblock. Check this out, coming a little closer, you can see the little white droplets all over the plant leaves. And now it's got a coat of ivory organics to protect it from sunburn which is one of the main stresses that kill avocado trees. So when the sun comes by later on this afternoon, we know that this guy will be safe. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos that we put on on average once a month. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.